Hello everyone and welcome to our podcast. Today we are honored to be in the company of Dr. Malini Karupia, a distinguished sports physician based in Hospital Sardang, Malaysia. Dr. Malini brings a wealth of experience having worked alongside sports orthopedics, surgeons in managing traumatic and sports related injuries at Hospital Sardang and the University Putra Malaysia as well as collaborating with surgeons from various hospitals notably she holds a crucial role in sports medicine serving on the medical and anti doping committee of the olympic council of malaysia her dedication to the field extends to being a life member of the malaysian association of orthopedics and malaysia medical association She was recently the match sports physician for the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022 and AFC Asian Cup 2023 preliminary joint qualification tournament doctor Dr Malini's expertise has been sought after for various championships and games and she continues to contribute to the field as a visiting sports physician at Prince Court Medical Center furthermore she holds key positions as a facilitator for Malaysian Association of Orthopedics and is an esteemed member of the scientific committee of the Malaysian Arthroscopy Society Dr Malini we are truly privileged to have you on our podcast today and we we'll look forward to gaining insights from your extensive experience in the dynamic field of sports medicine welcome thank you harshita for the very well uh, warm welcome introduction It's my pleasure to be uh, here today. Yeah, thank you doctor. So to kick off our discussion, could you explain the fundamental principles of uh, sports medicine and its significance in the world of sports and physical activity? All right, Harshita. So basically sports medicine, uh we are sports physicians. So we are not uh, surgeons. A lot of them get it confused whether we are sports surgeons. So we don't do anything surg- surgically wise. but sports physician basically uh we deal a lot with a uh, majority is msk musculoskeletal uh, injuries we also deal with exercise prescription especially those with uh, diabetes hypertension cardiac post cardiac rehab uh and also any kind of like a uh, return to play within the sports rehab as well and uh we also uh, are into a lot of uh, pain management i would say as well especially the injection uh per se So we are sort of like a diverse um, form of um, uh, physicians where we don't only deal with high end elite athletes but when you're working in a government setting we also deal with a lot of the public population because as long you're an individual you are we are you are known as an athlete as long you're having your body movement it's just the level of athleticism whether you're high elite uh, whether you're recreational or even here we call it as weekend warriors So there's a lot of few uh, uh diversity I would say that we tackle upon. Yeah, thank you Dr. Manni yeah, for you. providing us with a comprehensive overview. And now let's delve deeper into the preventive aspect. So how does sports medicine play a crucial role in injury prevention? Okay, so uh as you all know basically injury prevention is basically uh when you are involved in any kind of sports Okay there's a high risk of anyone and any age to have an injury so in order to prevent that normally we try to educate and it's about awareness uh to the public to the general population as well to elite athletes the fact that how we sort of can have minimize it we might not be able to completely 100% to prevent any injuries uh given a fact there can be a lot of factors whether it's the age of the person or whether how well is their training uh what what about even gender uh even let's say for weather like we are in asian countries it's very humid you know we have a uh, monsoon uh rainy season we have very much uh, sunny weather as well so we have to sort of like educate them about prevention so normally when it comes down to that we always talk about uh in in a very short form we talk about warm up even cool down before we do any kind of training or whether we do any kind of uh activity So normally we advise them about what is the level of warm up you know the 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 exact methods of warm up and what about a cool down what are different methods of uh, stretching because warm up and cool down you have a few different types of stretching whether it's dynamic in warm up 
and static stretching in a cool down where most uh, uh, general population tend to get it mixed up. Uh, so if you tend to mix it up, sometimes a high level of uh, uh, injury would be followed through. Uh, and also we're talking about uh, even uh, about nutrition, uh, dietitian and meal pr uh, plan as well. Uh, we are not uh, certified, I would say, like dietitian, but we can at least give a general overview about the education and awareness of how to go about to be more well equipped before any kind of uh, uh, activities. So in that sense, you know, this prevention, we're talking about uh, return to play, return to sports, uh, what is the right technique, uh, what are the ways that you have to sort of like uh, look out before you tend to participate in any kind of activities. Yeah, injury prevention is key aspect. And now I'm curious to know about the types of sports related injuries commonly encountered in your practice and what are some of the key factors contributing to these injuries? All right, so uh, my main practice, I would say I deal with a general population, whether it's the younger crowd, or adolescents, or even much more uh, older or elderly crowd. So when we talk about uh, young and adolescents, uh, they are basically uh, from the young age, they're going into a teenage uh, age. So we have to guide them about the uh, effects of training the effects of nutrition, the effects of even like for gender, like I said earlier, if, if there is a female, so we have to talk to them about even something called uh, uh, the, their cycle, menstrual cycle, how is it going to affect their training, uh, even for uh, uh, the uh, counterpart of male gender as well. Uh, certain sports, for example, if I give, if I give you, let's say basketball, there's something, a few injuries they might get, something called jumper's knee, all right? And if it might be a one or two other injuries, which is known as Osgood Slatter, or even Slinding Larsen Johansson syndrome as well. So these are all are basically uh, MST injuries where we try to educate patients and even the adolescents. And we're talking about a much older group, uh, especially um, uh, you know uh, the older group where might be high risk of osteoarthritis OA. Uh, but um, mind you, the fact that OA is not just something where people get alarmed thinking it's an old person's disease, but somebody who's extremely active. They have wear and tear and overuse injury. You might even get an OA a very much early age on as well. So we have to educate them about uh, the, uh, the, these aspects to them. And uh, even uh, about um, MSK injury, let alone uh, for those who are having even cardiac issues, even diabetes, hypertension, we have to educate them when is the right timing for exercise, what are the, uh, if they're on medication or even let's say for insulin, for those who are diabetes, we have to educate them about what is the right timing of exercises, what about their uh, meals intake, uh, even for blood pressure, we have to educate them as well. And uh, like I said, if you were dealing with elite athletes, so obviously their level of intensity of training is much more higher. So we have to advise them about, uh, you know, about recovery as well. As much we're talking about the yin and yang, which is the activity and training, we have to talk also about the yang, which is the recovery. So recovery, meaning we educate them about the importance of sleep, especially quality of sleep, the importance of um, uh, nutrition, the importance of hydration, the importance of uh, stress, because mental stress, physical stress can take a toll on, patient, on the person's performance, especially when you're, you know, representing your country and, and you're in an elite, um, you know, athletic performance. So we have to educate them about this particular aspect as well. Yeah, and uh, now let's shift our focus to the diagnostic methods in sports medicine. So could you shed some light on the methods and strategies for effectively diagnosing sports injuries and how does this differ from conventional medical diagnosis? All right, so when, let's say a patient would come to me, obviously we always start as a doctor, we always come down especially to the history. The history is very important because a lot of your differential diagnosis you get from the history. All right. So even if their age, gender, all right, uh, the uh, lifestyle, even uh, social economy, you know, whether they're du double story houses, they're, caught, they're staying in a condominium or whether a single story because it's going to affect, let's say somebody with ACL injury, is it going to affect, you know, how are they going to go up the, the, the stairs or whether they have a lift or whether they have, uh, you know, a single story or where their uh, education level as well. Are they in school? Are they in college? Uh, what about a distance? What about a traveling? Are they using a motorbike, a vehicle, or whether they are having public transport? So we have to go very much in deep in the history aspect. And the most important part of the history is obviously the mechanism of injury, MOI. 
because mechanism of injury would ex- will sort of like give you 80% of your differential diagnosis. For example, we're talking about ACL. Okay, sometimes it's the three Ps we're talking about. That means the patient says that okay, I I did uh, you know played a football, so my foot was planted. I did a pivoted motion. Okay, and also I heard the sound pop. So these are the three Ps. So you're already having a running uh, differential diagnosis which is going through your mind, which might be most likely in ACL, but also there may be other ligaments as involved. Uh, even let's say talking since okay, talking about the knee, even the meniscus injury as well. So that is why the history is so important, especially in mechanism of injury and whether they have previously injured the same particular uh, limb or, or region or whether their counter uh, aspect of the limb has been in, uh, injured previously and also about their social history, uh, their past medical history and surgical history because all this will contribute to the healing as well. And what about the pre-op, if they do need an operation, what about the intra-operation complications, the pros and cons, the post-operation pros and cons. Because um, like I said, uh, it depends on the patient's age, level of activity, what is their goal. So we have to explain to them if let's say if whether they do need an operating uh, procedure done or non-operative procedure. If an operative procedure, obviously we refer to the sports surgeons. If non-operative, uh, like we are sports physician, so we can uh, st- talk to them about pre-rehab. Even before an op, we can talk about the pre-rehab about the patient's uh, condition. Uh, you know, we talk about the nutrition, how about the hydration, and sort of like prepare them before any kind of op or whether they don't need an op. So how about return to play and return to sports? So a lot of evidence based as well. And uh, based on this, we sort of like guide the patient. Yeah, and once diagnosed, uh, then the treatment phase becomes paramount. So what advanced yes. Techniques or therapies are making an impact today. All right. So um, as you all know, if it if it is a clear cut injury, okay. For example, if you're having a shoulder injury or a or a or a knee injury ligament, obviously it has to be a, a recon done or operative done. Uh, but sometimes and uh, they might get even pain management. So pain management, we're talking about whether we're talking about um, uh, what is this uh, to how to sort of like uh, sort of like buy time so that they will sort of like not to say we are repairing the pathology itself but sort of like masking the pain for, for temporarily so for example we have something called even uh, steroid injections we have a perineural injection perineural injection meaning you're having your uh, sodium bicarb mixes with your uh, d5 uh, percent of your uh, dextrose as well uh, so you're sort of like uh, targeting the uh, neural receptors so that you sort of like you know bring down the pain mechanism uh, even chlorotherapy, all right. Chlorotherapy meaning dextrose plus um, uh, LA, okay. Uh, so you sort of like giving a, a re-injury back to an injury, so that the healing might be better, all right. And then of course we have even um, PRP, platelet-rich plasma, and those with joint problems. Uh, talking about lubrication, then we have HA, uh, hyaluronic acid. So these are a few examples of uh, I would say injections that we do offer for any patients that do come to us who might not need an operative procedure. And uh, now doctor, can you share some success stories or remarkable cases from your practice where an individual has recovered from severe injuries and returned to their sports? And what were the critical factors in their recovery? I have dealt with, uh, you know, being uh, 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 given the opportunity of being a a contingent doctor or even to a, for a team doctor. So I've come across elite athletes uh, who have injured. Uh, I would say one of it, I would uh, say for example, even um, an uh, ATFL injury, which is your uh, ankle ligament. All right. Uh, for example, for a basketball player uh, who represented the country for a certain event. And um, the particular player had an injury. And uh, so with that, um, they had to go for an operation after the um, uh, the game uh, was uh, done with. So before that, we had to bring them, uh, get the x-ray done, get the MRI done. And so meantime, sort of like um, bring down their pain. So we sort of like do an ultrasound bedside to diagnose that as well. And then with that, we also offered some injection um, procedures for the patient. So the patient was able to return to play uh, for and uh, compete in tournament, which um, you know, fortunately they did, uh, you know, very well. They managed to get a medal, and then later on, obviously, we referred to the uh, orthopedic surgeon for further operative procedure. 
what educational and career pathways are available for those interested in pursuing this field and what personal qualities do you believe are essential for sports medicine practitioner all right so um uh, if you wanted to pursue a sports uh, to be a sports physician so obviously um you know you have to go into uh, mbs uh, which is your undergrad as a medical to become a doctor and once you finish your undergraduation obviously you go through your housemanship your medical officer mo ship as well and then in malaysia we do uh, you know apply for our local masters okay we have a sports uh, medicine masters so do you do we do have an entrance exam so once you finish you do get through the entrance exam and then um you will call for an interview and you go for the uh, masters uh, uh, nomination i would say and when you get uh, do shortlisted and you do, do get into the program normally it's a four year program in malaysia the masters of sports medicine so in there you are basically exposed to uh, a lot of other departments as well especially uh, radiology because we also do uh, big set ultrasound uh, injection techniques as well you're also uh, exposed to rehabilitation department as well rotational you're also uh, exposed to medical department uh, because we deal a lot with medical condition as well like i mentioned earlier uh, and then also uh, you also have a orthopedic uh, uh, rotational and you also get involved with uh, uh, some uh, sports uh, coverages because you'll be in um, doing a rotation with the uh, uh, national sports institute in malaysia as well so i if you ask me what the qualities because uh, your passion will be your drive your work should not be something that it's sort of like you know it's a chore and once you enjoy what you're doing so if you have the passion for sports and uh, you do like uh, you know uh, uh treating patients and athletes and everything uh, even general population because majority i would say is general population and then certain times when you get called for uh, certain events to become the contingent doctor then you get to deal with elite athletes as well So I think your passion and your love for the uh, sports itself, you know, any kind of sports, and just being able to be um, having a better social, um, you know, platform, and to able to co- to, commu- to to converse with uh, fellow patients and uh, even athletes, I think that will give you sort of like um, you know an extra edge. But I still believe that just be yourself. You know, being yourself is the most uh, uh, true and being true to yourself and. Um, you know, and majority of the time we tend to like you know uh, be able to co- to to be passionate about your job so if you ask me i think it's the passion and love and the empathy also show a lot of empathy and kindness because you have deal with a lot of patients and players and uh, athletes with different backgrounds so we have to be very understanding of their situation and their background so empathy kindness and just the passion and love for your job and i think that will get through uh, you know any kind of masters if you ask me Yeah, thank you Dr. Malini for providing valuable insights into the educational and career aspects of sport me- sports medicine and for sharing your uh, insights into the fascinating world of sports medicine. Your expertise has shed light on its principal preventive aspects and the remarkable journey of recovery. We appreciate your time and knowledge today. Thank you so much Dr. Harshita Gupta really uh, honored to be you know part of this your podcast and uh, even if I can be able to inspire and to sort of like let people know what sports medicine is about uh, you know I'm always encouraging people to pursue uh, this pathway so thank you again for having me on board Thank you thank you so much and to our esteemed audience we also want to express our gratitude for joining us today Before we say goodbye I encourage you to explore our Medsanaps platform it offers a unique opportunity to engage in meaningful discussions connect with esteemed medical professionals and contribute to the progress of healthcare until we meet again take care and keep advancing in your medical journey I'm your host Dr Harshita signing off goodbye